so hello uh, good morning all I will do here in hello. Oh, thank you, Dr. Nanda. Uh, are you able to hear me? Oh, thank you. So, uh, welcome, dear participants. Uh, my name is Manasunan Biswar. So, today I'll be I'll try to build a foundation for the Python language, and uh, especially for the engineering. And I also tell you about the uses in machine learning. We'll try to learn the basic things first. If you've already installed the Python in your systems, you can practice simultaneously with me. And if not, you can uh, and practice with the recorded session. So we'll just start now. So let's start uh, what is actually the Python. Uh, one of the first reason is that it's open source and it's free. So you can modify and redistribute it as per your usage. No one is going to question it. It is, if we, it is also a very uh, powerful object oriented uh, programming. If you, if, when we differentiate uh, from the MATLAB, we can see that MATLAB is a licensed version. You cannot modify the codes or uh, you <clears throat> cannot distribute also. So, and one of the most, another advantage is that it is a large libraries and large models. So customized, uh, customized functions, customized libraries, according to your, your applications are widely available. In the market scenario, in today's market scenario, if you, when you see, you see that the Python is the leading and leading programming language for data science and that is used for the machine learning. In any case of machine learning, we need data and Python is now why it's getting a momentum in every kind of sectors. The, whether it is the machine learning, whether it is the deep learning or whether it is the AI based platforms or for any gaming sectors also. So if you see the career opportunity, it, opportunities, we can see 
as a big data ai of our uh, game machine game development we have any case of machine learning we need <coughs> data and so much so python so yes. now why as a computer as a so yeah, every every kind of we are sectors. mostly uh, concerned about the data unless we have data we we can we, <coughs> we have as much data we have we can go for the uh, the the developing any kind of systems so if you see the industry in the python it's whole wide bunch of things the, the google and the nokia the dropbox amazon netflix everywhere python is getting momentum so why you are going for the python the most of the uh, the most uh, important thing is that and advantage is that you can see its simplicity when you write a code for the uh, printing one sentence you can see we are writing in, in only one uh, one line here when we are writing for the python we are writing as hello world print giving giving this in the simple bracket we are printing as hello world but when we are doing such things for the c++ or any java we have to write so many comments lines about about uh, 1 2 3 4 4, four to 5 lines we are writing in C++ similar for the Java. One of the basic example you can see when you are swapping in numbers using C++ and Java and Python you can see in Python you can swap the numbers in one line only whereas it requires so many things for the C++ and Java. So, so before starting the question is which python we want to use python is basically free we can use any sort of uh, the available uh, languages in the in, in the browser or the market when i personally use the anaconda version this anaconda comes uh, with a whole lot of uh, other um, editors like the jupyter and the spider I will recommend Jupyter and the Spider. Other things are not necessary for the time being. So let's start today. I'll I'll show you how we are doing. I mean, start from the uh, coding from the Jupyter and some amount of uh, coding using the Spider. Same code is used here both in both cases, but it is the use uh, uh, application of the uses where you want to use Jupyter. It's better uh, because to demonstrate. Jupyter is better than the spider line by line code we can see in the Jupyter. So this is a Jupyter here. I have opened Jupyter now to start from I'll go for the new and the Python. So I'll start from the very basics like what things I do with the Python is first thing is it can be used as a calculator thing, like things like if I do 10 plus 5 it comes as 15 something like that means very simple things when we start doing it we, we can use that a simple calculator also or multiply anything you give shift and enter it goes to gives the result if we don't suppose I want to write something 125 into 5 and give only enter it will go to the next line but if i go shift and enter it will show only the result so first thing first what what we are starting to do we have to print hello world that's the first thing we do in every language we start from so today also same thing print what you go to do you go for the hello world you see hello world the first python language code or in any language when study so the syntax is very simple we give the print command with the simple bracket with a double quote and quote shift and enter it's called the hello world now when we start going for the numbers variables suppose i want to give when where i may start working with some simple mathematical functions like y x equal to mx plus c so 
for that i have to define something a is equal to let's say five and b is equal to let's say two as i have here we can define i can call also what is the value of a shift enter is five similarly you can go for the b also now if i enter a third variable named y is equal to mx plus c is i think x three into a three into a plus b again when you use shift enter you see there is no result showing but inside it it is stored the value of y if you want to know the value of y you just have to give print of y or simply y is true so in in this case you'll see that y is simply given in form of the directly calling the value without giving the quote and quote quote and quote means it is it will simply display what is there in the if i give quote and quote y the problem is it will show it's y only it's not the value of y it's y only so let's go for another thing so what are the number systems in python you see one is integer let's say 20 it's an integer secondly when there is some decimal we call it as float like 20 and 3 2 it's a float one thing you can see i'm giving here a hashtag hash hash means after that there the command will not work so this is like a commenting line line in any case in any language in python it's hash so another another one is complex like 3 plus 2 j it's a complex number system in case of python so how do we know what type of uh, number system it is suppose i want to know what is the type of variable stored here so for that i have to write it as type of x what is the type of x it's an int that means it's an integer similarly if i write type of y it will show float when i go for the type of z it's showing a complex So these are the simple things when we are going for the any kind of thing in Python. Now now we have the use of libraries. How can we use the one of the most important and widely used libraries the numpy numpy or it is called called or called as numerical python so let's see how we are going to use it first thing first we have to import the library how to import it we have to write import what to import one library here we are importing one library as numpy numpy is the inbuilt library in python so before calling the numpy we want to give it a, give it a name because numpy is a very uh, means five letter word we want to make it short a uh, sort so for that what we do import import numpy as np 
so what is np np is the nickname we are giving for the numpy so import numpy as np so next time when you call numpy we'll call as np and not the whole numpy so let's code something let's say we'll i want to give the x as 3.14 which is the pi value value of pi here we'll plot we'll visualize some data using the numpy then here we want to plot right sorry here we want to uh, uh, find the value of uh, sine of x so what should you do inside the numpy library there is a sign function so how you call the sign function np dot sign so one np dot sign of sign sign pi what is the sign pi below give here print of y so here you can see it's almost uh, zero only so what if i did here first thing i did here is that I imported one library named as numpy and gave it gave it name as np you can give any name even n will be also okay or let it be np now for the time being now i want to find the value of pi i mean uh, sine pi for that i have to call the sine function and to call the sine function we have to call the library in which the sine function is there so where the sine function is there sign function is there in the numpy library so here i'm calling the numpy library as np dot sign we can give the 10 value to it will give the see so whatever you want we can do here yeah okay, float now we are now a second example in the second example we are going for the again import numpy as np one more library i am calling this is the math library as mt Here also we'll do the same thing. We'll know the value. Just I'm showing you how many libraries are there. I Means what type of libraries we can call. X is called again 3.14, and Y is called to calling the empty function and not the sign function. Empty dot sign of X. print y same thing i have done here but here i have called a different uh, and different libraries as empty let's see you see all same result almost same result it is giving so if we actually we are only using the math library here numpy library we can ignore also So there is a very these two libraries are almost same, but NumPy has more versatility than the math functions. So we are using the NumPy library and it is widely used. So there is a very these two libraries are almost same, but NumPy has more versatility 
then the math functions so now we will go for the numpy library and the and it is widely used so if you want to know the type so so is a very, is a very, these two libraries are almost same so why numpy has more second so versatility then the math function so anything so now we will go for the numpy library and the and it is widely used so if you want to know the type so, so now we will go for to visualize these two libraries are almost same so why numpy has more second versatile in the data here in the math function and so you can now we will go for the numpy library and the and it is listing the data suppose i have two sets of data x is equal to i give the square bracket 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 before going further let's see why i have written such type of things here anything in between the square bracket are called the values whether it can be string string means words and if it's a or it, this is called a list means no one variable has number of values so i have defined here as 1 to 10 written here so let's say i am defining another set y is equal to 5 comma 2.4 comma 4 comma 8 comma 7 comma 8 comma 10 comma 9 What did I so, say? X is a variable, and it has ten numbers, five, which are called as values. In one variable, we are keeping ten four ten values. That's we call it comma as four, list. Comma eight, which is called a list. Why is it? It is for the data visualization, and also we are going to plot it. So let's say first see how we are seeing it. You see, already defined. So let's say I call the x. So it is showing here. You see here, x is x has the array of numbers here from one to ten, and y has a number from five to five, and other numbers randomly distributed. So my aim here is to plot it. I want to plot the values as x versus y. How do I plot it? Let's see how I plot it. So to plot the uh, for plotting, we need a separate library, and the library name is as matplotlib. Matplotlib. Dot py plot. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, okay. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, oh, what's so? I'm calling here a separate function as mat. Plot leave sorry dot by plot as p l t. So what did I do here? I am imported a library. The library is matplotlib. Inside the matplotlib there is sub library as pyplot, and the whole library is calling it as p l t. I can name it as anything, m l t, p l t, whatever you want. now i have defined the values x values and the y values now our aim is to plot it we want to visualize it in a graph how to do it to plot it i have to call the plot function that is plt dot plot plot of what is x comma y
now you can see let's see now you want to see it plt dot so There's some error I have to see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, oh Y has 9 values. We can add another one. And let's say 9 get 9. So the, the length of the Y and X should be same. Oh, okay. Here you can see we plotted <coughs> the values of y against x. So here is x from starting from 1 to 10 and is y values it fluctuates and I have given as per the as per my convenience. So let's say I want to give it a level. How to give it a level? PLT x level I want to give let's say x label i define the at time in seconds then i have to label a y again plt y label that is called here it defined the temperature in degree centigrade label must be given in single quote quoted so let's see how how you can see it you see here You see the x level i have given you time in seconds and the y level is in temperature as degree centigrade and to know what is the value how much here is a very small number 1 to 10 but in large files what happens we do not know what is the range of x or the range of y we can simply like here we can give the command is then length of x so length of x it is here showing as 10 so similarly i want to know the length of y it will again show as 10 so here it is matching in previous case there was one uh, number value missing so next go go for the another example here again i am importing numpy as np and again importing import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt the matplotlib uh, dot pyplot is only used for plotting functions if you don't want to plot you only use the numpy again similarly here i define x as 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and i want to plot a sine function what did i do np dot sign of x So you've already defined but i want to see what is the value of y y is the error of one dimensional value starting from sine of zero is zero sine of one is this much value sine of two much two is this much value and sine of last seven is this much value so i want to plot it let's say i plot it again to plot it you have to call the plotting function that is plt dot plot of x comma y 
similarly same thing we'll do we'll see we copy here and paste it here we'll give something else we'll give it is a uh, x only capital x and give that y let's see Line eight PLT. You see, it's the in Y, it's a sign value of X. So, similar things you have to do here. Let's see, you want to plot another one. So, if you want to know here the length of uh length of y you can see here also length of y length of y is eight one thing i have to show you suppose you want to access the value of third means you want to know the sign of three sign of three is how much how do you know you can call it as x of give a square bracket always remember python starts from 0 so 0 1 2 3 third is the value so x of 3 is 3 similarly if you go for what is the third value of the actually it's not the third value it's the fourth value 0 1 Zero, sorry, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, similarly, when we go for the y1, the fourth value will be this is the fourth value. You can see here 1, 2, 3, 4. That is 0 0.1411001. See here. So always remember Python counts from zero and not one. So if I change here from let's say change here from one <coughs> one to eight. Sign function like this, and we'll see x of three will not be three, but it will be four. It is something like this. So let's go for another example. Again, going for the here, we will use the another function. You want to call a function, I mean, number from one point to another point. Let's say you want to print the function, you want to call the uh, call the values of 0 to 100. Every time I cannot write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have to create a i mean create a number array from 0 to 100 and with a some numerical spaces let's see how we are doing it so first thing is again import numpy as np again import we are going to visualize this also so we are going for the matplotlib dot plot as PLT. So what I'm doing here, I'm really initializing one value. Let's say it is called as x start, and I give a number as zero. Then x stop. X stop. Let's say we get from the two pi. Two into sorry, two into np dot pi. So what is np dot pi? Let Let's see what is one np dot pi. Np dot pi. 
and p dot pi nothing but the value of the pi in the recent uh, previous example i just uh, wrote it as x is equal to 3.14 but it is the inbuilt function inside the uh, inside the python if you call the np dot pi it will give the pi value so the value is my um, uh, so my example here the value starts from 0 and ends with the 2 into pi and we give a increment function increment increment is equal to 0.1 if you are getting confused just wait for the next line we will know what is that so now i will define the x how we define np i will call the np function dot arrange sorry arrange arrange from I want to give the initial value zero. That is x start. X x start comma where it will stop. It will stop at the two pi. Call x stop. X stop. So it will start from x start and it will end at x stop with a increment value of zero point one. 0 0.1 means it first value is 0 second value will be 0 plus 0 0.1 third value will be 0 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 and so on until it reaches this value so let's see what is x you see 0 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 goes till to pi 3.14 or 6.2 something like that okay now since we want to plot it we have got <coughs> we have got the x value now i want to plot a sine function how do i plot a sine function similar thing y is equal to y is equal to np dot sign of x so what is y we'll see here these are the value of y against the value of x so x of 0 since x point 0 point 1 and these are the values now similar thing i want to plot it how to plot it plot again x comma y simple now we have to keep the plt function here again plt i give the plt dot x label x level is x and plt dot y level y plt dot so if you don't go on uh, don't give this so statement you may not visualize the plot you see so such a smooth sign curve here So if you want to know the 10, give here 10. The 10 function here. So what did I do here? This is the only thing. NP dot arrange. NP dot arrange, what did it do? It takes three arguments. Starting value, stopping value, and the increment value and similarly we can arrange it so 
so these are simple things now we go for the if statement use of if statement how do we use it let's see let's say I define a one variable 10 and the variable b is equal to also 10. How do we write a if statement in Python? If a is greater than b, print a is greater than b elif <clears throat> elif means else if if and else if else if b is greater than a we give print as is sorry p is greater greater than a one more else if you can use multiple elif one if and multiple elifs if there are many conditions if a equal to equal to b what did i do print a is so yes please Oh, uh, I may not have seen. Uh, can you, can you, can you please tell me what is the question? Ah, uh, what is the question? Mm, yes, please. Uh, plot plotting can you explain once again that sign and tan that possible i will say mm. regarding the only importing part sir yeah. can you repeat it very plotting on sir this coding part what you got okay. you see did you understand my uh, that when i called the function First two, yes, sir. Yes, we call the function. Yes. Then, what we are doing here, uh, we we want to let's say we want a number of um, simultaneous uh, sequence of numbers from one value to another, value. one initial value, one final value, and a increment value. Here the initial value is zero. I am I am trying to get the numbers for the x values for from 0 to 2 pi so for the getting from the values of 0 to 2 pi i want to arrange it in sequential manner from incrementing from 0 to 2 pi with 0 0.1 step function uh, step values just uh, visualize here i want to see you again x you see if this is another fun this is a function only where you can you can clear the uh, array of numbers from one value to uh, one initial value to one final value if suppose i want to give here here i am giving another example let's say i am taking let's say i am here d 
is for the giving a number you see let's say i'm giving here x start is 10 i'm stopping at 100 and i'm giving a step value of 2 that means you see what i'm seeing so what is d sorry here i'm giving d you see d is starting from 10 ending at 98 10 plus 2 12 plus 2 14 plus 2 16 plus 2 18 it's continuing till it goes to reaching here 100 so similarly here also we are doing the same thing we are starting giving at 0 we are giving stop uh, as 2 pi and the step values are 0 0.1 here it is 0 0.1 here i have given 2 10 plus 2 12 now once it is defined the x has a number from here d has a number from 10 to 100 in between the numbers he similarly here x has a number from 0 to 2 pi now what i am doing i want to plot giving a simple sign so for sign of 0 so it is given by it so sine of 0 the value is 0 for sine of 0 0.1 the value is this one it is simply increasing and then going down so the curve you are seeing here is nothing but the y values only against the x values so if others hello yes sir Ah, the question who someone asked can did he get or I, I have to explain yes sir again. yes sir it is clear okay okay so shall so you go ahead again yes sir. Okay, okay if you have any doubt you can ask me later also or some sir because we have time short well you will explain it also later in my you can you can ask me later also in personally So what I was doing here, okay, I was going for the if else -el statement. Let here I this is simple simple if and else statement. So if if a is equal to equal to b, then it will print us is equal to b so let's see how it works so i have given a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 10 what is so since a is equal to b it is giving that a is equal to b let's say i give it a 12 and run again so b is greater than a let's say I make it 14 a is greater than b simply simple if statement in the python and one thing you have to uh, ensure that whenever you are giving the spaces here in python the indentation spaces is very important if you make it wrong there will be error so each indentation you can see here it gives four spaces one two three four it automatically takes in case it does not take you have to give it manually four indentations if you if you by mistake you do any wrong give four i give it five or three it will show error let's say one two three you see already it has shown error by giving red i i run I, let me run it it is showing 
it's not taking here error but it's actually error here in the generally when we're getting for large codings in the functions or something else you have to give four spaces it is one of the you can say disadvantages of the python it has to give four spaces for indentation so now we go for the use of four four loops use of four loops in python simple for i in range any range you can give i give here 1 to 10 when this this colon is given the python takes four indentation in the next line you see if here this is a for statement it is showing that it is i want to give i want to take the range from 1 to 10 if the range is between 1 to 10 then print i print i you can see <clears throat> so it's printing from 0 to uh, 1 to 9 so what is value what is i i is nothing but it's the current value of the of this loop anyway we'll visualize some more things let's say i want to visualize data i give one example of data here let's say it's 1.6 comma 3.4 8.5, 9 9.4. Why I'm giving it? We will go for the another four example. Four x in data print. A simple statement if the values are in the data then print it that's it now let's see i want to these are only values suppose i want to give some words and let's say any cars i give some car list car list One first is Tesla. Then I give four. Then I give in Volvo. So what is the difference you see here? In case of the numerical values, we are directly writing the numbers. But in case of strings, strings means any words here. These are strings. When it is written in the quote and quote, it is called strings. How do I call the strings? Similarly, for car in car list. Print car. So you can ask where did this value can come from? Car. This is any number, anything. You can give it C, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. It will come. You see all the string values. 
car 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 values so the, the only difference is here you see let's say i want to know what type of data has the uh, it has data type type of here is the numerical value i want to know what type of data types it is there it is a list here it is also a list let's say what is there car list i have already told you anything which has a more than one variable now uh, one variable but number of uh, data or values are there it is called a list see these two types are called list suppose i want to know the value uh, it's a value of this ford i don't know ford let's say it's in the second list how do i call it let's say it's car list i want to call the second name i call it one why python counts from zero zero one so what is there in the it's a four if i give two it will come as volvo similarly so another example of a four list using the range function let's say define a value make it small for x in range range of n print x what do we expect it will come you see whatever you give it will just show the Values. Here you see, I have not called any type of libraries, so it is simply going from for range in n. N means range is ten, so it will count from zero to nine. Let's let's see another example like this. Let's say I give one one thing. Start is equal to four. Stop is equal to twelve. Again, I use the for statement for x in range. Which range? Start and start comma stop. Print x again. You see, four, five, six. So the so range is a function which defines by default to takes one as incremental value, and it will stop at whatever you define. So one more example. I want to find the sum of all the values inside a data. What is data here? This is data. Let, let me copy here and paste it. So, if you want to find the sum, how do we find it? Without using in libraries, let's see how we find it. First, we define sum as zero using for loop for x in data what we are doing sum is equal to sum plus x don't get confused i will explain it print sum
so we'll continue i will take a five minutes break i will explain it also again dr nando are you there uh, so sir actually i'm uh, uh, sir i am uh, means watching this uh, meeting in uh, mobile so where is the chat window sir in laptop the chat window is not enabled Empty swing chat in channel meetings is only available to team members. Sir, I don't have that symbol. Sir, that is only for guest, sir. That is only for guest, not for attendees, sir. Sir, in laptop, can you just uh, enable it? Sir, can you make us guest, sir?
Hello, Dr. Nanda. So, slowly resume. Okay, is my screen visible to them or not? Oh, my screen is off now. Okay, okay, okay. So, you showing the Jupiter. Okay, thank you, sir. So, <clears throat> so here we are again taking an example how to find the sum in a list. So, we have now four data here. So, we first define sum as zero. After that, we are incrementing each values, we are adding zero plus 1.6 each time. In the second instant it's 1.6 plus 3.4 in the third instant is 1.6 plus 3.4 plus 5.4 similarly it goes on till there is x values of data in there values of data in there this is the total, 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 total value of data in the in the, in the, uh, in the uh, list. list now i let me find out how to find the average Let's say n is equal to so the find there is simple to formula is just sum by the number of values. What is the number of values? How do you find it? By length. Length of data. How do you find the mean or average? N is equal to sum by n. So what is mean? Mean is 4.975. Now we will go for the while loop. So how to use a while loop? <sighs> Let's say I define a variable with h and we will see how we use the while loop statement while m is <coughs> greater than 2. This will print m. And the condition is each time it will decrease m minus m minus 1. You see, while loop is used where there is a condition it will continue once the statement is valid. What did we do here? We defined one variable eight. The our aim was to print the value of eight or print the value of m until this condition m is greater than two is satisfied. So it will go till eight seven six five four till it goes for the and unless and until it is greater than 2, it will, it will print the values. Now we, it's a simple things. Now I go for the functions. How we are defining functions. And we will start with the very simple functions in Python. And what are the functions? Functions are in, in functions are in, in formulas. formulas. You can say, you can say anything which you call, it will show your results. It takes some arguments, arguments. And we will define a functions. Take two numbers, pi, 
creating a, a function first thing is we will define the function define a function we need, you need to first you need to first df, df. we will be defining a function <coughs> the function starts in the df what, what is, is it dos adds what it adds it takes two values x comma y means it will take two inputs x and y what is and what it will give in return it will show the result of x plus y it is a very simple function to add two numbers here it will take two arguments x and y and it and will it show, show the value of x, x plus, plus y i, I can, can I can, I can define, define any name here to add numbers. I can, I can let's say, say like we write here plus. plus. Define plus. plus. What is it? So, so let's see how it works. So, so I have already defined an add function whose name is plus. So if I give plus two numbers, it takes two numbers, two arguments 10, 20. What will it return? It will return 10 plus 20 values. You see here. If I add, if I add here add, it will also give the same result. Add. And let's say I change some values. Compare. So what do we see here? We can define functions. We will take inputs and it, and it will return the value as per our choice, whatever we will define here. We will define that it will take the two numbers and it will add them and it will return those values. Let's see here. One more function example. I want to function for Finding the mean. And send the total, total sum and mean of the values. 18 a list. What is the list? List is here. This is the list. One variable, multiple data, and it is always defined in square bracket, and never in any any variable over bracket. Let's see here. Function. What do we do? Same thing. Define. Since we are going to find the sum and mean, it is statistical. Yeah. So, so you can start. start. We, we can, can do. You can, can name anything. I name it here as start. This start of x. You see, the indentation is again four spaces. I'll show you. When you give colon, pattern thinks that a loop is going to be created or, or a function within a function. So when I give enter, it, it automatically takes four spaces one, two, three. And four. So we define total sum is equal to is zero. Zero. Similar thing we have done here also. To define sum, then now we are getting all loop. This is. 
for x in Manasar, your mic is muted. Hello. Ah uh, yes, sir. Ah. Now the so, some participant wants to ask question. I think. Somebody like Tejas Kumar. Yes, sir. Actually, this uh, chat box uh, is not uh, working here. So, if you uh, agree, they can they can ask me directly here. Mm -hmm. So, Sambit Naik, you can continue. Sambit, you are muted. I think. Uh, can you an unmute? Yes, sir. Mic? Yes, sir. Uh, I am unmuted now. Yes, I am please. unmuted now, sir. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, when you have to find some larger function like integration or something else, then what should we do? Oh, we have not gone to the integration level. Uh, we have not still went to the integration level. We are still on the basic functions. We are trying to cover it. Okay, sir. Okay. Mm. Others, do you have any questions, please? Sir, I have, sir, hello. Uh, sir, can, can okay, I get sir, this meeting other, recording? Others comes on to ask again, I will see it. mean is equal to total sum by n return total sum total sum comma mean so here i define a, a define a function which finds the total sum and returns the mean and the thing is that here it returns two values and not single value you see in the add function it only it takes two values but returns only single value here it will take it will return double values <clears throat> that's so we've already defined it so we have to now define the data what is the data here only So what is total sum? Total sum is equal to 19.9 and mean is equal to 4.975. So here in one function we are getting the two values. So you so you can know why functions are very important 
and why it is very means it solves a lot of complex things in one go so next time you i save it and every time you call this function it will always show me the the sum of the list values here and the mean without without going for the more complex calculations every time i call it so now you see find file handling so how to file handle file handling handling file in python first thing we'll do is that create a file create a file and and we'll put some data let's say first is in text so let's say clear create a file so i define one variable anything i can give here i am giving f now the syntax is open open any name you can give let's say i'm giving my file my file one first file i'm creating dot txt comma x sorry small x this command opens a file so why is x x means we have to write on the file so i want to put some data which type of data i have defined the data and i did just hello world you see the data is in form the string and i am writing it is here now to put to put this data in the file what i have to do i have to give the write command f dot write what to write it will write the data once it writes we will close the file there is some error i think okay one file exist we'll give another file let's say i give it as 4 okay now the file is been created so where do i see the file is been created now i have to open the file again you see in the parent home folder maybe the file has been created you see here the file is created here let me open you see in this file you can see the file or not this is my file for here i have written as hello world and here i can when i open it i can see now i have to see it in the command prompt i mean not the command prompt that the jupyter how do i see it so i have to open again open same my file for dot txt you see here i give r r means i read more here i will not write it i'll only read the file what i'll need i'll read the data and f dot read after i read it i print the data and again i'll close the file f dot close <coughs> let's see oops it's f dot read f is the file name so 
see in this here i created the file i wrote the data and closed the file in the writing mode we are giving it as x when we're reading the file we give it as r so it's printing the data data is the hello world hello world we were given here we are getting the hello world for large number files also the same thing it will show all the data in one book let's see how it is happens let's have data same data will take where is data oh this is the data here i create another file f is equal to open open what do i do i give the what i do i create a file i give the file name my file so five dot txt txt means text file this is extension same thing x x means writing mode but here one thing is there there are multiple values so i have to put each values at one go so for that i have to give for loop so what do i like for value in data semicolon what to do it will record or read whatever you can give the name this is a variable name the record is equal to str of value i'll tell you what is str str means string this is actually numerical value we want to put the put these numerical values as string means as a word format it's not numerical format so it will convert this value as string after that same thing you have to write write what write the value record same thing you have done here you have to write data you have to write record you have to write again you write you see a new thing here backslash n backslash n means giving a new line feed backslash n means giving a new line feed each time it records it gives one line feed it means one enter and it goes for the second one so after it com completes everything it will close the file so everything has been done now same thing we'll do we'll read the data whatever values it is there in it how we'll do same thing f is equal to open the file name data after that f dot close you see for reading data is the same command we have given here same thing same for line same thing everything same now let's see see what did you see the data was in a one dimensional array form as numerical values we converted it to string and after each data is recorded it gives one enter you can see in enter format so we will take another example for function 
let's say you want to find out the um, what do you say Pythagoras theorem uh, the hypotenuse how do you find it let's say define define Pythagoras theorem defining Pythagoras theorem uh, defining Pythagoras theorem uh, using a function so how do we define how do you define the function first thing first define def I define Pythagoras Pythagoras what does it take in the Pythagoras it takes two sides and calculate the hypotenuse that is a one side is a square second side is b square so h square hypotenuse square is equal to sum of the both square side sides so we have to take two values of the two sides a comma b anything what will return simple a square a square plus b square it's very simple so one thing you see how do you define the square if you give double multiplication sign it is square for example let's see 5 square you want to cut calculate the square of the 5 5 square you see it's 25 similarly so here we define the pythagoras so next time i call pythagoras of any two numbers 3 comma 4 what will come it is of course, it's 25. 3 square plus 4 square is equal to 25. 16 plus 9. So, it's already um, 12.35. We will try to sum it up. before that i just want to give another example you know actually i'll show you directly from the wave itself so i have defined i mean i have told you about the matplotlib library how it is done plotting so i will show you some of the plotting examples so you if you want to know about the matplotlib you can directly go to the matplotlib.org i write here again matplotlib.org this is the official site of the matplotlib library the matplotlib is so <coughs> shows you how you can define various type of plots I'll show you some plots. You see, this is a line plot. Already I had shown you. And this is a histogram plot. In histogram plot, you plot like these values. This is, I just, let's say, increase it. See, when I'm finding the histogram, I again need two functions. Uh, I mean, two libraries. One is NumPy. And then this matplotlib.pyplot as plt np and plt. So, what is done here in the histogram? What do we do? We need suppose we want to find the probability density function. In probability density function, you need to take some random values. You see, the probability density maximum is defined, it defined is at a this type of distribution.
so we are taking here is mean or distribution standard deviation and similar things are there i'll show you another example here in the just a minute i have one example for you mm. which is a function bar plot you see it's actually a bar plot i'm just in case here here you see i have used the matplotlib as plt and numpy as np and i have defined three different uh, lists which are used for the bar plots. I just plot it and then explain you. You see, I've given one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten number of uh, values and each has some values it is these values are for my research purpose so i have used it here i'm just showing you so how it is the bar is plotted if you can plot single bar or multiples of one bar so these are inbuilt functions here i have defined uh, here the labels which which type of level it will be like the green color will be this one sobel prewit kenny those who are acquainted with the ms processing they might be knowing this sobel pretty and kenny they, they are the, <clears throat> the age detection techniques we will not go through those techniques we I, I just want to show you that how we are plotting a bar plot using those values this 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 all these functions are already defined i have not gone through these things these are already available in this uh, website itself so if you want to plot any type of uh, data i mean plots bar plots or <clears throat> pie plot you can you need simply your data for, for example in my case i had this type of data so i wanted to plot the bar plots so i plotted them So since the time is going out, I, I'm just showing you how you can do it in your hand also. Similar things are there. You just go for the uh, the same thing we have done. This is all. This is whatever this complex are not actually so much things. You have, you can just use it as it is, and you can change it like weight of the bar or or the height of the uh, bar this is ne only needed for a customization of your plot but the real values are only your values if you have this type only web values you can plot it just a moment so this is one type of bar plot these examples are already there in the matplotlib itself <clears throat> so i'll show you another pie pie chart you see here one two three one two three four four values are taken sizes and uh, sorry just a moment can you see it hopefully so here no numpy nothing we just wanted to plot it so we just took the value of uh, tick to call values like 15 30 whatever values or data we have then we are leveling leveling it as whatever you want then we are just plotting it you see in python you can plot various plots very beautiful plots also and if you are to customize it you can use these examples also and do it for further explanations we will continue may continue in another session today 
I have to submit up here. And till now, whatever I have taught, if any doubt is there, please ask. Dr. Nanda, are you there? Hello, Dr. Nanda. Dr. Nanda, are you there? Yes, sir, can you uh, hear me? Sir, we are able to hear you. So, if you want, we can take another examples also. Um, until Nanda sir comes here. Nanda sir is there, sir. I'll show you how the append function works. So what is the append function? The append function is something which you want to add to the list. Suppose some value, there is a value of 10 list and you want to add some values in that list. You can append it. So we'll, we'll see how it is done. Here I use uh, import math as empty and import matplotlib matplotlib dot pyplot as plt x data where creating a empty uh, empty empty list so that we can later add the values in that list y data is equal to again empty list so in this example we will go for another for uh, for statement for i in range between 0 to 10 colon so it's data dot append x and y is the something empty dot sign of We are here also creating simple sign plot, but in a very different way. The different way is that we are we have a, we we are creating a range of numbers. We are calling one number and putting in, putting those values inside the empty list. Y data is called to empty Y data dot append y so what did i do here i create i call the function x in range 0 to 10 what will what it will print 0 to 9 it will print now first x dot append x 0 value it appended append means it's added the value inside the this then it find what is sign of zero after finding it it is again, again app appending, appending means adding those values inside, inside the y. y it will be continuing this loop, loop and until it reaches 10. 10. 10. so 
लेकिन विजुअल डाटा ये एक्स जीरो सी एक्स डाटा सही है इसी एक चढ़ा एवरी वैल्यू इज गेटिंग एपेंडेंट हियर जीरो टू नाइन सिमिलरली यू कैन सी द वाइड डाटा वाइड डाटा सो सी सेम थिंग यू आर गेटिंग इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लेवल इट यू कैन लेवल इट पी एल टी डॉट एक्स लेवल पी एल टी डॉट वाई लेवल सो एनी वे टिल नाउ वी हैव कंप्लीटेड दिस एंड दिस इज आवर लास्ट एग्जाम्पल सो डॉक्टर नंद आर यू देर Can anyone help me in calling Dr. Nanda? Sir, Nanda sir is there. Are you getting hearing me? Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, got. Sorry. Maybe there are some problems from his side. I got to hear now. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Sorry for that. No, you can you can unmute all them so we can chat. We can talk directly. Wild mixer. Can you explain again, sir? Wild mixer. Hello, Mivur. Yes, sir. Regarding the while loop, I got the for loop, but while loop is a little confusing for that one. Okay, while loop. Where we were there? Just a moment. Ah, huh. what is the doubt about the while loop? Sir, how it function functions in a uh, Python? Hmm. While loop, you see. The function, can, sir. Can you see my screen? Yes. Ah. Huh. so while loop i have just only given one example but you can ask uh, what is while loop is it will run until one condition is is valid so in what what stage you are getting confused for the while loop the iteration bar iteration you you want to this one to see i defined one variable as m is called it okay so it will print the value of m until this condition is fulfilled uh not sorry this con condition is fulfilled only until m is greater than 2 it will print m so first it will print m i defined 8 it, it printed 8 in the first loop it become M is equal to m minus seven. That is, m is equal to seven. Seven is greater than two. Yes, it will print again seven. And when it becomes six, is six greater than two? Yes, again print six. So it will continue till it becomes reaches two. Is two greater than two? No, it will not print. It will come out. So this is the basic function of the while loop. Yes, I got it. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Hello, Tapas. Hello, sir. Ah, please. No, till not, still not audible. Uh, sir, some network problem, sir. Okay, okay, you can ask. No problem. Ask. Sir, actually, I wanted to ask that uh, inside a list, uh, can you take two, two different type of uh, means data types like uh, string and integer? Yes, we can take. We can take, but we have to define that little bit uh, tricky. Maybe another time I can explain you how we can call it. Both okay, are sir. list. So when we are going for machine learning or anything, these list values are very important. They will be needed for any type of data an analysis. Because let, let's see. Let, I want to show you one data. Just a moment. Uh, if you have seen any CSP data, wait. CSP data time. Can you see this example? I mean, image. Yes, sir. You see, in most of the data, data means when you are analyzing, this type of files will be there. Suppose uh, this file contains something, means cylinders, uh, whatever maybe. So every time they are usually separated by either by space, space, either or, by by space comma, or by comma. And and each each time, let's, let's say I want to take this displacement, displacement only. So, so for that, that we have to take that 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 uh, that place that is zero one two that is second place only, and, and I, I have to ignore this first line empty cylinder, cylinder because I cannot plot it in the it will give errors. So in any case of machine machine learning and data analyzing, these files are very this type of files are very important and they are usually created also to plot them conveniently when we are going for any programming in python usually have you seen might be seen in in, in microsoft uh, excel also you select this column and then plot it directly source so in python we do it in a very different way if you want to in complex situation we do it so this this i want to just show you that this type of things we can uh, we can what we usually use to uh, programming Python for data science purpose. Can you see this one? You see, this is uh, a lat latitude and longitude file. Actually, I have don't I don't have that file. I can. So here I am creating one latitude list, empty list. The last example what I have shown and the longitude, these are empty list. Each time I call the file, I use this, these columns, my defined clubs, one, five, six, something. And usually I get this type of results, whatever I want. So that's a little advanced form. Maybe we can teach it later. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you.
So anybody, if any question, can ask me. Mm -hmm. So, Sailaja, Sailaja B, someone. Hello, I think uh, your audio will not clear. No, sir. It is audible, sir. Ah, may might be broken. Just try to uh, tell. I may listen. Sir, is it audible, sir? Okay, okay. Try. Yes, yes, please. Sir, can you tell about your person? Uh, which one? Pupils, concept, pupils, concept. Mm. I said that one only. What did she ask? Oh, tuples in Python. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Tuples in Python, it's like the same thing. It's what I list. The list are called also tuples. You see, what is there? So this, 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 this you can. This is also called a tuple. What is this? This data, sorry. This data is also called a tuple. Means tuple is nothing. Means this type of data you are defining is called tuple. If I, if I define it in anything. Anything is called a tuple. If I define here uh, some fruit, also it is also a tuple. This, this all things are tuples. This is also a tuple. I can say that car I have defined that is also a tuple. Where is that car? This is also a tuple. So if I even if I put numbers inside it, it will also be called as tuple. So there is no worry about the tuples. The tuple can be multiple of strings, multiple of in integers. Uh, or mix of integers and strings. So, what do you want to ask? Uh, hello? What is the use of tuples, sir? Oh, you, tuples are, you, no, there is no specific code we can use. We call it. Suppose I define it here. I see it. Okay. Uh, you see, here I am writing as 1 to 10. It's a values, it's a tuple. Its name is tuple. When I identify x is a tuple, or it's a list, it's almost the same. The use is only you, you they are the data you want to access it. You defined it, it in your own way. Okay, sir. Is there any question? Yes, please. Sir, explain about classes, sir. Classes. Classes? Yes, sir. Means the data types or what? Yes, sir. Data types only. I saw you. Oh, I think I saw you. First, uh, first, uh, where it can you see three types I had shown you? One is integer, another is float, another is uh, 
complex numbers. If it is a whole number, one, two, three, four, it is going integer. If it has a decimal like this, it is called uh, the float. And if it is complex value, complex value, where is complex value? That, 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 you see, this is a complex value. 3 plus 2j. It's kind of complex value. So, this type Not of... complex value, sir. Classes. Classes, sir. Okay, okay. Classes. Data, creating a new class. Classes, I have not, uh, today I have not actually described you. I need to, I have to again. So I think I can take it later. If you can email me, I will explain it. Today I think I have not prepared for the classes actually. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for classes, uh, today's session was not there. Classes, so it's, uh, uh, it's different, I think. I, I'll, I'll take it later if you want to so email me. I'll, I'll explain you. Yes, sir. Thank okay. you, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, the recording, sir. sir, can you send us the recording? Can you send us the recording? Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, please, yes, yes. <laughs> 